some weather. 
Precious. 
some gas, cried Tom roughly. 
Seems so stupid. 
hungry as I was, as we all were, I was tempted to laugh whenever he opened his mouth. The transition from libertine to prig was so complete. I've got something to tell you, old sport, began Catsby. But Casey, but Daisy guessed at his intention. Please don't, she interrupted helplessly. Please, let's all go home. Why don't we all go home? Husky tenderness in his tone. 
she looked at Gatsby. There, Jay, she said. But her hand as she tried to light a cigarette was trembling. Suddenly, she threw the cigarette and the burning match on the carpet. Oh, you want too much, she cried to Gatsby. I love you now. Isn't that enough? I can't help what's past. She began to sob helplessly. I did love him once, but I loved you too. Gatsby's eyes opened and closed. You loved me too, he repeated. Even that's a lie, said Tom savagely. She didn't know you were alive. Why, there's things between Daisy and me that you'll never know. Things that neither of us can ever forget. The words seemed to bite physically into Gatsby. I want to speak to Daisy alone, he insisted. She's all excited now. Even alone, I can't say I never loved Tom, she admitted in a pitiful voice. It wouldn't be true. Of course it wouldn't, agreed Tom. She turned to her husband. As if it mattered to you, she said. Of course it matters. I'm going to take better care of you from now on. You don't understand, said Catsby with a touch of panic. You're not going to take care of her anymore. I'm not. Tom opened his eyes wide and laughed. He could afford to control himself now. Why is that? It passed. 
last and he began to talk excitedly to Daisy, denying everything, defending his name against accusations that had not been made. But with every word, she was drawing further and further into herself. So he gave that up, and only the dead dream fought on as the afternoon slipped away. Trying to touch what was no longer tangible, struggling unhappily, undespairingly, toward that lost voice across the room, the voice begged again to go. Please, Tom, I can't stand this anymore. Her frightened eyes told that whatever intentions, whatever courage she had had, were definitely gone. You do start on home, Daisy, said Tom, in Mr. Gatsby's car. She looked at Tom, alarmed now, but he insisted with magnanimous scorn. Go on, he won't annoy you. I think he realizes that his presumptuous little flirtation is over. They were gone, without a word, snapped out, made accidental, isolated like ghosts, even from our pity. Yes. <laughs> 
reminded of the conversation because he heard Mrs. Wilson voice, loud and scolding, downstairs in the garage. Beat me, he heard her cry. Throw me down and beat me, you dirty little coward. A moment later, she rushed out into the dark, waving her hands and shouting. Before he could move from his door, the business was over. The death car, as the newspapers called it, didn't stop. Wilson's body, wrapped in a blanket and then in another blanket, 